Hey there, Python trainer Ruven Lerner here. Let's say I create a simple function, def hello, return hello world. What actually happens when I run this function? If I say now hello, well, sure enough, it returns hello world. That's not much of a surprise. But what is Python actually executing? Now, many, many people I encounter in my training, many people think that Python is an interpreted language, meaning that line by line by line, it's turned into something executable and then, well, executed. But it turns out that Python is actually a byte compiled language. That's the same sort of technology used in Java and .NET, where our code is compiled into an intermediate format, sort of a high level software only assembly language. And then that assembly language, those byte codes are interpreted by, well, the Python runtime. So it is actually a compiled language or a byte compiled language. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But what do those byte codes look like? Well, it doesn't, it's not like you're going to be writing byte code or even reading byte code, but some use of byte code and some of a sort of examination of byte code can give you some insights into how Python works. I've been doing this a lot over the last few years, and the more I look at Python byte codes and understand it, the more sort of I understand how all of Python was designed and how it works together. So let's take a look. I'm gonna say import dis, and this is the uh, module that comes with Python uh, to help us disassemble our functions. And I can say dis, dot dis of hello. And now I see what Python is actually executing. And notice, it's actually very simple. We're going to load a constant here. And already you might be saying, wait, Python doesn't have constants. Oh, Python doesn't have constants. But Python functions have constants. When you create a function, when you use def, you're doing two things. You're creating a function object and you're assigning it to a variable. In this case, the variable is hello. And that variable hello, if we look at it here, hello, dot dunder code. This is where a whole lot of things are stored. Not only the byte codes, I'm going to go down here, CO code, those are the byte codes there, the things that are actually compiled. But all the other CO stuff is a bunch of hints, suggestions, ideas, helpful things that the Python function needs in order to execute. One of those is CO dot consts. So I can say hello dot code dot CO consts. And sure enough, it's a tuple with two separate elements here. It's a two pull, none, which is always there, and then hello world, which is our string. So what's going on here? Dis dot dis of hello. So first what's happening is in the bytecode, it loads the constant and it loads the constant one. Why one? Because that's at index one in CO consts. And then it returns that value. You might've learned in uh, um, sort of computer science classes that you might've taken that there's something known as a stack machine. All right, so we have an argument or more than one argument, and then we run a function or some sort of uh, executable part of the computer that knows how to execute things based on the stack. So return value takes the only thing on the stack here that was loaded and it returns it. So if I were to say here, def my func return five, how's that gonna look? Dis dot dis of my func load const five return value. Hey, that's pretty good. What if I say def my func return 10, 20, 30? So now I say dis dot dis of my func and right, it's gonna load up the list and then it's gonna return that, right? No, 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 actually not. Wait, what? So what's going on here? So what you see then is that our const, if I look at my func dot code dot co consts, consts can only contain immutable data. So it can contain strings, it can contain integers, it can contain tuples, but it cannot contain a list. So when we say here, hey, Python, I want to create a list, 10, 20, 30, what does it do? Well, it first says, let's build a list with zero elements. Let's build a, an empty list. And then we're gonna load a constant of what, 10, 20, 30. And then we're going to extend our list. It's sort of like doing dot extend at the Python level. And we're going to add the three elements of that tuple, 10, 20, and 30 to our list. Now we have a list at the top of the stack and now we can return that value. Perfect, fantastic. You might be saying, wait, that seems really weird. That's probably because this is really weird. Well, what if I have a shorter list, def my func? What if I say here, return 1020, say dis dot dis of my func? Well, now it's getting even stranger, right? Well, now our my func dot code co consts, my func dot under code dot co consts. What's it gonna have? It's gonna have none 10 and 20. And we see that we're loading the constant 10, loading the constant 20, and then building a list with two elements, and then we return that value. So what's going on? Why 
are our two element lists being created explicitly and our three element lists not being created explicitly? And the answer is actually an optimization that was done in the Python byte compiler a number of years ago, where there were all these small wins, and believe me, I haven't checked it, so I couldn't tell you. Apparently, this is a much faster way for Python to run. Now, it's not gonna change everything overnight, but a lot of these small changes can actually make a big difference in how Python runs. So you see here that list extend is being used with a tuple and thus our constants are always tuples or always gonna be immutable. And if you have a small list or an empty list even, it's just gonna be created there in line. Now, if you see this, you might say, wait a second, what about other things? What if I have a tuple, right? What if I say def my func, I'm gonna say here return 10, 20, 30. Well, you can probably guess this, this, this of my func. Since tuples are immutable, we can just load that up from our constants right, and then return that value, and that's exactly what happens here. There's no problem with having a tuple as a constant there. So we've seen strings, we've seen tuples, we've seen lists. What other sorts of types might we have? Well, how about a dictionary? What if I say def my func? I'm gonna say here d equals a1, b2, c3. I'm gonna say return d. And I say dis.dis of my func. I hope you are sitting down when you see this. Holy moly, what's going on? Well, we're gonna load the constant one, then we're going to load the constant two, then we're going to load the constant three. Why? Because those are the values. Then we're going to load one more constant, a tuple, a tuple of the keys. And look at this, there's a special bytecode, build const key map. And this build const key map, we give it an argument of three. And what does it say? Oh, three keys, three values, Vroop! and then we have a dictionary object. What are we gonna do with that dictionary object? I'm going to assign it to a variable. Notice here, I made it a little different than the previous ones. I assigned it to a variable. What happens when you assign to a variable inside a function? It is a local variable, and that's noted here as store fast. So we're gonna store into the local variable D, our dictionary that we just created, and then I'm gonna return it. Well, how do we return it? We have to load fast. I know it seems kind of silly stored in the load, but that's the way it is, and then we return the value. If I had simply said return that dictionary, well, that would have been a different thing altogether, right? Return, and then there would have been no storing this, that, this of my func. And here we go. We would just build that and then we return it right away. Well, when would assigning to a variable not be a local variable? Because remember, if I do this and I say dis dot dis of my func, it says store fast. What happens though if I say, and by the way, I'll add one more thing here, which is if I say my func dot code dot co var names, what are the names of the local variables in this function? D. There's only one local variable D. But what if I change my function in a small way? What if I now say global D? What global D does, this is a declaration, it tells the Python byte compiler, it doesn't actually come out anywhere in the bytecodes. It affects the bytecodes quite a bit as we're gonna see. But the global D declaration says, when you see an assignment to D, don't, you know, don't make D into a local variable, store in the global D instead. So now if I say dis dot dis of my func, what's gonna happen? Well, we're still creating our dictionary in the old way, right, in the standard way, load const, da 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 da, da build a key map, and then we store global. See, global D means don't store in a local variable, store in a global variable, it changes the bytecodes. And if I check then my func var names, there is no local D variable. So the global statement, the global declaration tells the compiler, it's not something that's executed at runtime, it's actually a hint to the compiler compile time. Hey, just because we're assigned to D doesn't mean that D should be a local variable. Note all references to D as global. And that's what it does. And thus we don't have a local D variable. I just wanna show you one more thing, which is kind of wild here. So if I say def my func, and I'm gonna say here, return a set 10, 20, 30. Notice, curly braces, but it's a set because we don't have any colons there. And then I say dis dot dis of my func. So are we going to create a set and then update it with a tuple? That would kind of make sense, right? Yeah, but that would make too much sense. Instead, we are going to say build a set with zero elements and load constant and then set update, update with one thing. Wait, 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 a frozen set. What the heck is a frozen set? Well, remember that some Python data structures are immutable. Those would be ints, strings, tuples, and frozen sets, as opposed to the mutable ones, which are, of course, lists, dictionaries, and sets. You can't have a constant that is mutable. 
And so if we want to have a constant that's a set, you can't do that. It would have to be a frozen set, an immutable set. And if I look now at my func.code co consts, we're going to see that frozen set in there. And why is it a frozen set rather than a tuple? I have to assume, and this is based on assumptions, not based on actual checking. So like, you have, might have a better guess that sets have already gone through the whole hashing, unification. We don't need to worry about it. We just slurp up the set into a regular set as opposed to have to go through all that extra stuff. So I'm going to talk lots more in future videos about Python bytecodes. I hope you find this as interesting as I do. That sort of peels back what's going on, you know, peels back, I don't know, behind the curtain. I'm, I'm sure that I'm mixing metaphors here. What's happening in Python, how it works, and how the Python byte compiler might seem kind of dumb, but it actually does a bunch of things that are good at uh, improving the efficiency of our system. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can always contact me on Twitter or follow me there. You can always subscribe to my free weekly Better Developers email list where I give all sorts of hints about Python every single week. And stay tuned here and subscribe because I'll be back soon with lots more about Python.